Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenges of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane, and joining me today is a very special guest, Dave Locke. He's a private practice physiotherapist with a clinical interest in chronic pain. He completed his bachelor degree at Curtin University, Western Australia, with an honours project on conditioned pain modulation, resulting in a published article in the Journal of Pain. That sounds like an interesting journal. He also has a diploma of remedial massage and is a registered yoga teacher. Dave currently resides in the Shushwap region of British Columbia, Canada. I hope I've got that right. He and his wife can usually be found trail running, hiking, swimming, paddling, or at this time of year, skiing, and generally making use of the mountains and lakes nearby. David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kane. Good to be here. Now, firstly, the Journal of Pain. Tell me a little bit more about that. What, what, that, that sounds like it would be... You know, it sounds like it'd be a very useful journal, but also sounds kind of dangerous. Um, you got an article yeah. in there. Yeah, there are there are actually quite a few pain journals around. That one's the um, Journal of the American Pain Society. Um, more and more these days, there are um, research articles and, and and research being done on on pain and the mechanisms behind it, and chronic pain in particular, which is a big load on health systems all around the world and. Uh, and personally, a big load on individuals as well. Yeah, so what got you interested initially in, in, in chronic pain as a specialist area of physiotherapy? Oh, sucker for punishment, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a slow and steady um, process working with people with chronic pain. There's been a bit, um, a bit in my family. There's been some inflammatory arthritis that kind of sent me in that direction, uh, so yeah, I guess that kind of sent me there initially, and then yeah, dealing with some some pain myself as well after the fact. So uh, and and it's been interesting to me uh, again a similar um, arthritic pain, and then uh, with what I've learnt about pain, actually finding ways to kind of deal with that and overcome that, and still be able to be very active and and enjoying what I'm doing, and and seeing that pain actually kind of reverse and and calm down makes me more interested in sharing that with with the people i treat as well yeah well i guess for the people out there what's the difference between i guess what people would consider like an everyday pain and what chronic pain would be um in your eyes obviously an expert in the area what's that difference between pain and, and a chronic pain well yeah actually the first point i would say uh, i'm not sure if i'd call myself an expert yet i, I really uh I'm heading in that direction out of interest, but there's there's definitely a lot more uh, expertly experts out there. Um, as far as the difference between chronic pain and, and, and pain, the simplest definition is, is a timeline definition. Three months duration makes it chronic pain. Uh, reason being in three months, most of your uh, acute injuries should have resolved if they're gonna resolve. Um, if you've got bigger, uh, um, injuries and multiple issues and, and surgeries, then sometimes it takes a little longer. But pain-wise, three months usually you'll get you'll get recovery. Um, a couple of things happen with your pain system at that three-month mark if things haven't uh, recovered as well. So you can get some keying up of your pain system, like a, a volume increase of that pain system, and that can lead to some a little bit more difficult pain to deal with clinically so yep. yeah so uh, my partner wakes up with a, a sore hip and she has done for the sort of last six months would depending on that is it the level of pain and the depth of pain would that be something which is considered chronic because it's been going on for a period of time is the definition a bit a bit around i guess the period that has been happening and also the depth of the pain then yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, it's not necessarily severity. It can be a low level, low level niggling pain and still be chronic if it's been around for a long time. Um, and it can be quite a severe and overwhelming pain and be chronic as well. Or you could have a severe, overwhelming short term pain that's not chronic, right? Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It, there'd be a linkage between people who are suffering chronic pain and then potentially having uh, not all people, but having mental health issues or other health issues as well. Like being constantly in pain would just be a real downer as well. So you'd be empowering people to get better would also, I guess, assist with their mental well-being as well. I could only imagine chronic pain would just be, yeah, a, a, an absolute drainer. 
For sure, actually, yeah, there's some, some research out there that shows there are changes in the brain when you have pain for a sustained period of time. Um, you know, it affects your ability to think and reason and, and arguably your intelligence level in, when you're in, in the experience of pain. So, you know, changing that can make you more um, able to engage back into your life and, and, and what you choose to do with it. So. Yeah, it, 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 are people skeptical about chronic pain as well? Like, I've, oh, you could, like I say to my spouse every day, oh, you just got a sore hip, you'll be right. Like, just do some exercises. But she wakes up every day with with a sore hip. Like, are people sort of a bit skeptical? And I'm, I'm guilty of that in that instance. Um, is it something where there's that level of skepticism, or are people a bit more accepting of it these days? There's definitely a healthy level of skepticism around, um, or an unhealthy level. It's um, pain's something that's very hard to to see or to measure. It's a subjective report. You know, if you're in pain, I can ask you how much pain and you can tell me, you can tell me what it feels like. You can describe the uh, location of it, but, you know, I can't see it or measure it other than, than that. So, uh, um, yeah. And then, you know, what we, what we can measure is level of damage versus pain, right? So we can take scans, we can um, look at function and, 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 and make an assessment from that. But if you don't see a whole lot of damage with someone and yet they're still in pain, then those are the people that tend to get hit with a lot of scepticism. Because medically speaking, we do like to have a clear answer of what's driving someone's pain and disability. And if we can't see or find something, then yeah, it's, it's hard to fathom sometimes. Yeah, but that's the nature of the human body as well. Like uh, chronic pain in a particular area might be caused by something completely different or even something as simple as the way you walk or the surface you're walking on as well. So it might not be something which you could, when you scan, it's not something obvious as well. So I think for people out there, like you can, can obviously have chronic pain and pain and it, it not be um, entirely related to the area which you're getting the pain from. That's true. Yeah, you can have referred pain, and you know, and also a lot of the soft tissue pain is not really very visible with with our scans and things like that. But yet, it's still a very valid pain. Um, what the the people that tend to get hit with the most scepticism are the people uh, who do have that increase of volume of pain, the the sensitivity of the pain, and we've got more and more people researching this now and, and, and a greater understanding is coming and it's it's now filtering into the clinical situation as well. So hopefully in the in the near future we'll be dealing with this better and better. And one one big change I saw was actually with our our definition of types of pain and, and not acute versus chronic, but types of pain in the body. For for many years we've had two definitions. We've had no susceptive pain which is uh, the easiest way to say it is it's coming from tissue, bone, um, it could be organ, it could be an outside growth like a tumour, uh, or you've got neuropathic pain, which is coming from your nervous system, right? Yeah, yeah, and, that make, makes sense. Yeah, and neither of those two things actually describes what happens when your pain system is sensitised. So there's been a lot of people who've had the story of it's all in your head, you know, you need to get over it somehow, you know, just, just work your way back into function, it'll go away, and which is not, not a helpful way to describe it. And just last year, a new definition has come out, a third type of pain called nociplastic, which is uh, basically talking about a plastic change that's happening in our pain system. Uh, and, and the significance of that is it takes it out of your head and into your pain system. So it's now something that has gone haywire outside of your head your head is part of your pain system arguably but it's not it's not housed in your head anymore so now you can use your head as a tool and your mind as a tool to overcome this pain rather than it being the culprit and the victim right oh wow that's a, that's a really that's only happened in the last sort of 12 12 months ish that sort of new definition around that plastic sort of pain yeah this is a definition yeah um i mean it's been in the pipeline a while but it was published as a word last last year i believe early last year so was that in the uh, journal of pain as well or another journal or it was in the international journal of pain i believe which is another one most of them have pain in the title <laughs> 
<laughs> well, are they, they're not, I shouldn't make a pun, but they're not painful to read. They're not painful articles to read. Could the everyday sort of person get something out of these articles or are they really geared towards the medical professional? Uh, no, I mean, you could, if you, it helps to know how to read an article, but um, yeah, they're generally, you can generally get something out of it, even if you start with the abstract and uh, there's generally a good, good summary there. And, uh, you know, some are harder to read than others, but uh, but mostly you can uh, you can get an idea of what's going on there. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of people out there, and if they have some sort of pain, we'll just pop a pill like an ibuprofen or um, something like that to try to relieve some pain. What other options are out there? Like obviously where an ibuprofen just masks the symptoms, it might take the pain away for a little bit or you might put a heat pack on it. Um, obviously yeah. physiotherapy is a, a viable way if it's a body-based pain. What are some of the other options out there for people uh, who are suffering chronic pain? Yeah. Um, education is probably a really big part going forward because, I mean, it's not even enough to say go and see a physiotherapist because our our classic approach with physiotherapy will, will often flare up a chronic pain sensitized patient. Um, they'll often have the story of, you know, I've seen three physiotherapists, two chiros, five massage therapists. It's got worse every time, right? So it needs a different approach and, and education is number one and is key because we need to change the, the thought process behind this pain. We need to start to understand what is happening in the pain system and why we can start to ignore it and why we can start to dial it down and why we can still push towards function even though it's flaring us up. So um, that can come from, and it should come from the physiotherapist, it should come from the doctor, it should come and can come from a counsellor or a psycho, psychotherapist as well, psychologist. Um, as far as specific things that I would say we could um, incorporate exercise on a graduated basis and 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 really be symptom driven at the same time educating about you know can can we override this symptom is it okay not too pain focused in that sense breath work is great to calm down a sensitized um system mindfulness techniques visualization techniques so you know if you can't even get up and get walking and 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 um without pain it's it's enough to start by lying there and visualizing that you're walking pain free and visualizing that you're doing whatever meaningful movement or exercise you can think of pain free and that that will start to dial down your pain system as well okay so um, going down that education sort of education route for somebody who's experiencing chronic pain where is the best place to start is it with a, a psychologist is it seeing a physio is it seeing a doctor who can then refer you on to somebody who might be uh, have a clinical interest in chronic pain in a particular area is there a is there an area or a professional where somebody should start yeah it's it's a tricky question because you i i think you need you need someone at this stage of the game you need someone who has some idea of what they're talking about with with a chronic pain situation because it's just as easy to to mess up your description and have someone walk out thinking it's all in their head or have someone walk out actually more fearful than they were when they came in. So, um, go but imagine, imagine a lot of the times you just roll into a doctor. I've got a sore hip. I've had a sore hip for a couple of months. I'll prescribe some sort of pain medication might refer yeah. to a physio. They've got a referral relationship to if it's something muscular or they think it's something muscular. So, yeah, the, the GP might be a dangerous one as a starting point in that, you know, they may not have an understanding of, you know, chronic pain and how to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, ideally they do, and they will more and more as the as the years go on. Um, and the GP is is generally a great starting point when they are informed, because they are the the ideal point to be a um, a referral point, a, a collator of of all the information. So going forward, that will be a good spot to start. Um, at the moment, online there's a lot of um, information pain um websites are a good good spot to start there's associations so uh, i mean i'm over here in canada but for you guys in australia there's places like the australian pain management association um they've got a pain link helpline which is open for most of the day if you need to talk up to someone and they're usually staffed by people who are are or have been in pain um there's chronic pain australia and they organize a national pain week there's pain australia 
again, it's all got pain in the title. So if you <laughs> Google pain, you might find something. There's the Australian Pain Society. I think they're the the main ones I remember. It's been a, been a few years since I've been there, but. Um, well, yeah. what, 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 what would be the risk for a client who is just relying on medication and as opposed to seeing somebody like longer term, if you've had chronic pain for say six or 12 months um, right. and you've just been taking, taking, you know, I guess, drugs for it. What are some of the risks for clients who are just doing that or sorry, uh, people who are just doing that? Yeah. Um, I, I would say first off your medical doctor or your pharmacist would be the place to go for your most specific information. Absolutely. Um, it's it's out of my scope of practice um, as far as prescribing or really uh, talking about the pros and cons. But um, but the key I find is always to weigh up those pros and cons and and talk to someone who is informed about it. You know, some some medications are best used short term and they shouldn't be a long term approach. Some medications are actually really just not that great for chronic pain patients. Uh, and we're learning more and more about this as we as we learn. Um, more about the mechanisms behind pain. Um, I think the one the one medication group I would make particular comment on is um, is are the opioids. Given that you know, mm. you know it's in the news quite a lot at the moment, and uh, and the risk of opiate use is is dependency. They're quite an addictive drug, and they're also not necessarily that great for chronic pain sufferers as far as when you might use an opioid, they're great after a, or, well, they're very beneficial, I should say, after a, an acute trauma or surgery where you need to control quite severe pain, right? But they, they, they should be a short-term use. And uh, longer term, they actually make the situation worse because they basically bind to your uh, opioid receptors similarly to how our endorphins would. Uh, but if you keep supplementing it with medications, your endorphins are no longer produced to a sufficient amount. So if you ever come off these medications, you don't have sufficient endorphins to control your pain or control your mood actually at the same time because both systems are driven on endorphins among other things like serotonin. But um, yeah, so that can be bad. And then also um, it increases dopamine release and long-term continual dopamine relief uh, release while it feels great um, can lead to unavailability of your dopamine receptors and then you need a higher and higher dose mm. and then you get a tolerance to the drug so you need more and you can't come off it and and yeah, yeah. it's like a dog chasing its tail you just keep on taking it to take away from the pain but eventually you know if you do deal with the pain and you come off the medication then you yeah you you've created bigger issues for yourself than maybe the chronic pain was in the first place yeah yeah, for sure. <clears throat> There's some great um, YouTube podcasts with, um, you know, if you know who you're looking for as far as uh, informative podcasts that are actually made very user-friendly here uh, and understandable. Um, and Laura Mosley would be uh, a great name to look up. He's uh, an Australian uh, pain neuroscientist, very educated and uh, somehow explains everything in a very uh, simple way and an easy to understand way which is really helpful anyone out there who experience experiencing this is well worth googling uh, as a starting point as long as you're looking at reputable sources there's a lot of dr google out there which is uh less than ideal but as long as you're looking at reputable sources from somebody yeah. who is an expert in the field it's, it's well worth doing at least some initial education for yourself um by doing that and then maybe taking that to a, a GP or a practitioner who can direct you in the, in the right way. Um, David, is there, is there a different way that chronic pain presents between men and women? So based on gender? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, like we get man flu as, as men. Um, I'd imagine chronic yeah. pain would be different between men and women as well. Uh, supposedly um, is what I would say. As far as the literature says, there, there are differences. What I would say about that is I'm not quite sure we've found the answer as as yet because yeah. there are there's a lot of personality and and trait kind of um, input that that might not necessarily mean we're controlling variables. Yeah. As far as we've found, pain intensity um, is increased in women. Women are more likely to get chronic pain. Um, it's more likely to be more severe um, as far as the, the current literature says. Wow. Um, they, women really get the bum end of the deal across everything gender-wise. That, that sucks. 
Yeah, I mean, as I say, intensity is increased with women with multiple different tests testing types as well pressure pain heat pain cold pain ischemic pain electrical pain there was some however some literature that suggested men experience more anxiety related to pain yeah yet not as great an intensity of yep so we have less pain but react worse to it yeah that sounds about right that sounds about (laughs) right (laughs) like the man flu then Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's well worth if you if anyone out there is experiencing chronic pain, it's well worth trying to deal with it because you know there's linkages to mental health. If you're medicating and using the wrong medication, it can you know have some serious long term issues. So the most important thing is you get some education and, and and take that on board and then deal with the pain. Yeah. Um. Now something which is probably more personal and, and maybe not painful is you're from WA. Generally, this time of year, we're in Australia. It's um, thirty odd plus degrees. You've relocated yeah. to Canada, and you said before we started talking on air that uh, it's negative a couple of degrees. What was the rationale between relocation? Oh, I met a Canadian basically, and uh, <laughs> she she dragged me over here. You enjoyed over there. It'd be a different sort of life, obviously, temperature-wise. Loving actually, yeah. There's yeah, I'm enjoying the mountains. We're near some lakes. Um, missing the beach, but the lakes are uh, you know something that. Uh, fills that gap temperature is something interestingly um it took a while to get used to the first the first winter i was rubbed up with multiple layers and you know your normal average canadian just had a long sleeve shirt on and uh i've been here for years now and it's changed each year Uh, and i've put i've worn less and less and now i'm kind of wearing what everyone would wear and yeah i find and the interesting um parallel to that is actually how how you might start to overcome pain in that you know when it's unfamiliar and you're anxious about it and you're attending to it it hurts a whole lot more you know you don't know how much worse it's going to get you're worried about if it does get worse you're you're you know you're checking in every 5 10 15 minutes but once you kind of figure out the parameters of it you know you you, you figure out you know, this is about as bad as it seems to be getting. It's not getting any worse. Can I deal with this? Yeah, I can deal with that. Okay. You know, um, you stop attending to it. And as you stop attending to it, it starts to dial down and it starts to get less and less. Yeah. It's that, it's that, it's that slow process. It's day after day, step after step of dealing with, you know, the changing climate or the, uh, dealing with your pain and maybe that subsiding. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I had, um, in, in the honors project I did, I actually caused pain on people effectively because I needed to, <laughs> I needed to test um, pain modulation. So um, when someone is getting a pressure pain stimulus where the point of pressure turns to pain uh, without any pain stimulus, and then you'd stick your hand in a cold um, ice bucket of water, which really quite hurt. You'd wait a minute until it started hurting quite a lot. And then you'd redo the test and see how that pressure pain threshold had changed, right? Now, I actually, my, I couldn't use my results in it because I was the examiner, but I did the test before I did it on anyone else to make sure that I wasn't being uh, too mean to people. And, you know, I was rating my pains up at, you know, 8 out of 10, as, you know, most people were saying 7, 8, 9 out of 10, right? In yeah. your hands in there for two minutes. After I'd done everyone, you know, towards the end of it, I, I had another go to see what it felt like. And, you know, it's the same temperature of water, my hand's in there for the same amount of time. And it was about two out of 10 for me for the whole time when my hand was in there. Because the first time round, I'd seen how bad it was going to get. And it didn't get any worse. And I didn't die. And my hand didn't fall off. And so the next time, there was no anxiety related to it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it, it does. You, you already, you've acclimatized to that. There's no real f- fear of it anymore. You know how bad it's going to get. So yeah, you understand what symptoms you're showing and yeah, you can deal with those as they come up. Yeah. Well, we've That's spoken true. a lot about pain today, David, and, and it has been anything but painful discussing it. So I thank you very much for coming on the show. Welcome, Kane. Yeah, great to talk to you. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. Do subscribe to Daddy Eats Last on iTunes and thanks for listening and we'll be back next week for another episode or should I say serving of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.